In this section, we're going to talk about two very basic operations on vectors. Um, so far, actually, we haven't done any with vectors. Uh, you've, you've met a couple that have special names, like ones, zero, unit vectors. Um, in, in the last section, we talked of, about uh, examples of vectors, right? But so far, we haven't actually done anything with them, okay? So um, in this section, what we're going to talk about is uh, addition and scalar multiplication. So that's, uh, these are operations on vectors. Okay, so vector addition. Um, if you've got two vectors of the same size, you can add them. And we're going to heavily overload the notation. We're just going to use the same old plus that you'd use to write 2 plus 3. So the difference is when plus appears between two vectors, it's really referring to vector addition, not to, of course, the addition of two numbers. Okay, and the way you do it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you just add the corresponding entries. So here's an example. is two, three vectors, this one and this one. And that's, that's their so-called sum, okay? And the way you get it is you just do it entry by entry. So for example, on the second entry, we add seven and two, and sure enough, we get nine. So that's how you add, add vectors, okay? You can also subtract vectors too. So that's, that's, uh, that's the idea. Now, we'll shortly see practical applications of this, but for the moment, this is just like this. These are the rules of the game. This is what it means to add two vectors. Um, let me add... One thing to that, you cannot add vectors of different sizes. Okay, so that if you attempt to, if you say, what is, you know, this, uh, you know, one, zero, minus one, um, the answer is it has no meaning. That, that it has absolutely no meaning, right? You might as well write something like zero divided by zero. Okay, um, so just can't be done. Uh, so that's an important thing to, to remember. Um, oh, and I should say that uh, all languages that, either allow, you know, support uh, vectors will allow you to add them. There'll be something. In fact, very often, it's just a simple plus. So, okay. Um, so there's some properties of vector addition. Um, and let's see what some of them are. Um, well, it's commutative. Com to commute means that you can switch the order of two things, like one thing first or second, and it's the same. That, that's what it means to commute. Um, and so we write that this way. It says A plus B equals B plus A. Um, now, uh, I want to say something about some of these equations here, and in fact, it's about the power of notation, right? Um, yeah, when you look at this, you know that this equation is true when A and B are numbers. Basically, it says, uh, you know, addition of, num addition of numbers is uh, commutative. If I add 2 plus 3, it's the same as adding 3 plus 2. Uh, so, um, that's the commutative property, right? Um, but here, uh, the difference is these are vectors. Um, and so what's happening here is both plus is a special plus. It's the plus between two vectors. And even equals has been overloaded here because it's basically saying that the left and right side are, are vectors, right? Not, not numbers. Um, now, the other thing is that a lot of these things are just really easy to look at and go, yeah, whatever. I mean, come on. And just glaze over it. I mean, they look good, right? Like, I don't know. Um, here. Uh, if I add two, if I add two things, and then then add that to a third, it's the same as if I added the first to the sum of the second and third, right? This is true if A, B, C are numbers, but it's also true if they're vectors, right? Um, um, here's one: uh, a plus zero equals zero plus a equals a. Well, you kind of look at those equations, you're like, well, what else could it be? What else could a plus zero be? It's got to be a, right? So it looks good, um, but it's actually saying something. And actually, this is a great example where uh, we can say something that's kind of interesting here. Uh, first of all, we here, 0 is a 0 vector, and it's got to be the same size as a. So if a is a 5 vector, meaning it's got a dimension of 5, then this 0 is, a, it's 5 zeros stacked on top of each other in a vector. That's, that's, that's what that is, right? And we determine that from the context, because it, it doesn't make sense to add a to another vector unless they have the same size. And a has size 5. So whatever you add to it better have the same size. So that's the idea here. Um, okay, so, uh, so th this, is a, this is an example where we can work out the size of zero from the context, okay? Now, oh, here's one. If you subtract a vector from itself, you get zero. Now, that, this is very important, that's the zero vector. Um, now, I want to say just a couple things about properties like this, right? That, um, so the first is, uh, and this one is important. 
it's easy to let your eyes just glaze over things like this. I mean, they look good. That's the point. I mean, that's the point of good, you know, A minus A is zero. Well, duh, what did you think it was going to be? Um, what's very important is to force yourself until you really have internalized these to realize that very elementary looking notation. It looks like the kind of notation, you know, the stuff you were writing when you were in like first grade or something like that. But this time, these are not numbers. It, the plus, the minus, the equals, everything here is actually means between vectors. So make sure that you're, you know, this is sort of, I guess I, I put it this way. It's mindful equation reading. Don't just read it and go, yeah, whatever, okay. You look at it and you ask, what does it mean? Is that a three vector? Is that a five vector? What, you know, that kind of thing. And you just, you know, uh, just process it slowly. So that's the first thing I'd ask you to do. Um, okay. Um, the second has to do with action. So somebody actually has to show these, right? Like, <clears throat> I can't just say this and say, well, okay, actually, uh, in the, you know, whatever, late, uh, late 18th century in math, real math had not really started by then. I mean, they knew a lot of stuff, but it was kind of mixed together with theology and all sorts of stuff. And nobody had the idea that you actually had to show something. It was more like, well, what else would it be? Or they didn't have that idea. But these days, and these days means for the last 200 years or so, uh, the way we do it is you define something, and then when you assert something, you have to, sh I mean, if you, you either show it's true or basically no one's going to believe you, okay? So some, somebody somewhere has to actually show that for any vector a, if you subtract a, you get zero. Um, now, what I will say about showing this is it, it's interesting to sort of think about one or two or whatever, but no more than that because they get exceedingly boring. Um, but it is, it's interesting to know that, I mean, somebody has to do this, but Anyway, let's just do an example. I mean, this is really pretty dumb, uh, but let's just do an example. Let's subtract 2, 1, minus 3. Uh, from that, let's subtract, you know, um, 2, 1, minus 3, okay? And we're just going to blindly follow. We're going to go 2 minus 2, and we're going to go 2 minus 2, and we're going to get 0. We're going to go 1 minus 1, and that's 0, 2. And minus 3 minus minus 3, that's 0. So there you go. Okay, well, apparently... This holds for these, this specific uh, vector a. I mean, that's kind of silly, but that's the idea. So the way you would show this in general is you'd actually say, well, we'd write a, uh, let's do three vectors, right? We would do this, uh, and then we'd write it out in component, you know, in its coefficients like that. And then we would say that's a1 minus a1, a2 minus a2, a3 minus a3, and that in turn would be 0, 0, 0, okay? And then there would be the whole, the whole stack of argument. Now, th these are uh, often, to be honest with you, verifying some of these, uh, these properties is just incredibly boring. So um, if, you take a real, if you take a real hard, if you take a math class on this, you will likely be forced to do it. But the good news, that's the bad news. The good news, it's not that bad. The good news, you do it once in your life and that's it. And then after that, once you've done it, you never do it again. So, okay. All right, let's talk about what uh, adding. So, so far, I, I mean, really, so far, in addition, we've just talked about kind of what it means, right? Uh, it means you just, you add the corresponding entries. It's pretty, okay, that's what it is. But now what we're going to do uh, is we're going to talk about what does it mean in various practical contexts. And that's, all, that's actually always super interesting. And that's kind of the point of this class, actually. So, okay. Um, all right. If you have displacements, right? So here's a vector... A, which represents a displacement. It says move, you know, five units to the right and one unit up. That's what it, that's what A means. Here's B. It's another displacement. It's a displacement that says please move one unit to the left. That goes this way, and it says and three units up. Okay, and then here it turns out that the when you add those two vectors up, the what you will get is the displacement obtained by doing one of the displacements and then the other, okay? Now what's cool here is here, it means you could go A, and from there, you go up here uh, to B, and this would be A plus B. By the way, you could do the same, you could, you could, we could show commutativity here uh, in the sense that B, if I did first, I went to B, then I would go to A, okay? And that would show, that, that would be B plus A, and sure enough, it would be the same as A plus B. So this is the idea, is you add displacements, right? So, um, so it says, you know, if you start from a, you know, home base and I say go one kilometer, you go one kilometer east and two kilometers north. And then I say, let's, let's, let after that, from there, 
please go, you know, negative two kilometers east or whatever, uh, you know, that's two kilometers west, and one kilometer north. Uh, you would add them and you'd get the you'd final displacement from your base camp or something like that. So that's the idea. And this is a very traditional idea of you know, vectors. This is kind of the picture that you see from, you know, whatever, high school physics or something. Okay. Um, now, uh, vectors, I mean, vector subtraction is actually very interesting because it can be used to connect uh, positions to displacements. And very typically, the displacement from a point Q that, that's the coordinates of Q to a point P is actually P minus Q. It's, it's actually where you land minus where you started. So for example, um, if, if that's a vector there and Q is given Q, the entries of Q give the coordinates of, of Q, here's P, and it says if we move from Q to P, our displacement vector is P minus Q, and that's the blue vector shown, shown here. Um, so that's, a, that's also a, 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 a connection. Uh, and this is, you know, when people first hear about vectors, it's usually in a context like this, in a vector calculus or a physics or mechanics class, a basic one. Okay. Um, now we can also uh, multiply. Uh, we can, there are some types of multiplication that you can carry out with vectors. We're going to talk about several of them before the course is over. But a very important one is that you can multiply a scalar. Remember that that's a, just a fancy word for a number and a vector. Um, and so here, if I have a scalar beta um, <clears throat> and an n vector a, um, then you can multiply them. And, and you write it this way. You literally, you just juxtapose them. You put them next to each other, the two symbols, right? So by the way, you don't use times and you don't use dot, okay? Those are reserved symbols. Also, those are kind of for children, to be honest. I mean, you know, people who write whatever. Well, okay, it's fine here. You can write that. That's fine. But you don't write that uh, over. Uh, you don't write that with vectors. Um, in fact, times and dot actually have a different meaning with vectors. We're going to get there. Don't worry. Uh, <coughs> so here, the, the notation is you just juxtapose them. Um, oh, and sometimes people put the vector uh, put the vector in front and the scalar afterwards, right? So. Um, for some weird, you know, this is just pure convention. It means the same thing, but uh, this people, this is weird. I don't know why you don't see it that much, but anyway, that's. It, but it, everyone would understand it if they saw it. Um, now the question is, what's the meaning? What's the semantics of this? Well, semantics is pretty simple. It says when you take a scalar beta and you multiply it by a vector, you get a vector comes back same size, and it's really kind of simple. What it says is just please scale every entry in that vector. By the, co by the coefficient, by the scalar, or the number beta. So that's written out here, okay? So let's do a quick example. Let's multiply uh, minus two, that's our scalar or, or number, times this three vector, one, nine, six, okay? And you just, you multiply each of the entries by minus two. So you get minus two, minus 18, minus 12. There you go, there's that. So that's, uh, it's pretty exciting. No, it's not, this is extremely boring. But this is just the, this is just the mechanics. This is the plumbing. This is this is what it means to multiply two. So far, it has no interest, no meaning. When we look at applications, it starts getting interesting. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, um, let's mention some properties of scalar vector multiplication and things like that. Um, so <clears throat> here's one, and these equations, you know, you have to be super duper careful. I mean, at the very least, <coughs> what you need to do is look at these equations and understand what it's saying, uh, because uh, just a handful of symbols here can say very sophisticated things, and you need to be uh, mindful of that, right? Because that, that's what that's what good powerful notation is, right? When I write down like five characters, right, and it has it's packing huge meaning into something, that's when you got to be on your toes. It's that's that's good notation, right? Um, okay, so and these would be things like I don't know. Uh, here's one. Uh, this says it's associative, so. Here we have to be super duper careful. Let's imagine that A is a 10 vector, okay? <coughs> and of course here, beta and gamma are scalars, so they're real numbers, right? Real number is just a, I guess it's just a number, okay? It's, yeah, it's a real number, that's it. Okay, um, so then let's go through and very carefully analyze this. Um, it's not saying something spectacular, right? It's saying, it's saying basically that if I have two numbers and this one, when I put the parentheses here, I see the I see the juxtaposition of beta and gamma. Now that only means one. That's multiplication. Um, 
But in this case, the multiplication is between two real numbers. And we know what that is. That's just like, that's what you learned when you were, you know, in, uh, in grade school, right? That you multiply the two numbers. Uh, so, so what's in this, this per parenthesis is a number. It's the product of beta and gamma. Then that is stuck in front of A. Uh, but A is a 10 vector. So now what we see is this looks like a number times a 10 vector. Now we know what that is. That's a 10 vector, and it's the 10 vector obtained by taking every entry in the vector and multiplying it by the scalar, the number in front. Okay. Now, on the right-hand side, we see something it's, it's actually different, right? On the right-hand side, we see gamma, which is a number times a. Now, gamma is a number, a is a vector. Gamma times a is therefore a vector, so that's a 10. So what's in the parentheses here is a, is a vector. It's a 10 long vector. Then we call the multiplication again, sorry, I'm using some computer science language there, but then what we do is we carry out multiplication by the scalar beta again. And that's, uh, that's it. So actually, and, and the result on the right-hand side is again a 10 vector, and it has to be because this equals here doesn't make sense unless the left and right-hand side are vectors of the same size, and they are in this case. So that's the, that's the, basic, uh, that, that's the basic idea uh, here uh, with, with, with all of this. So, so you know, please look at some of these equations. They look silly. It's hard to focus, but just go through and make sure you understand what every single thing, is, like, you know, which, like, I could ask a question, like, here you go. What plus is that? Plus is overloaded. Plus could mean between numbers, as in 2 plus 3. It could be between two vectors, right? So which is it? Well, in this case, if I said that b is also a 10 vector, um, this plus just happens to be the plus that adds two vectors together, right? Um, how about this plus right there? Well, that plus, you look at what it's adding. It's left and right. It's so-called arguments. Those are numbers. So this plus is the, is the plus that you knew about uh, when you were a kid. It's, it's, it's 2 plus 3 equals 5. That's what, that's what that plus is. So anyway, I would recommend uh, that you, you know, these equations look super innocent, but be sure you understand them perfectly. I mean, really, you should audit it, make sure you get it, because uh, it's very easy to get into trouble. This is a very powerful notation. Okay. Uh, you can combine the two concepts of scaling or scalar multiplication and addition, and you get something which is pretty much at the very center of this course, and it's the idea of a linear combination. And let me say what that is. A linear combination is this. I give you a list of vectors, m vectors. Uh, oh, this is a perfect example of a notational ambiguity. Uh, this is absolutely standard throughout all branches of mathematics, applied mathematics, and many other fields. So it, it's not quirky to just linear algebra or something like that. And what it is is here, these are m different vectors. Okay? So, uh, as opposed to, if I just walk up to you in the street and I say A is a vector, then A3 means the, the, it means literally the third entry in A, and it's a number. So I, for example, it minus, might, might be this, okay? Now, on here, in this case, A3 does not, A3 is the third vector in my, in my series of vectors. That's what it means, right? So these could be the feature vectors of M patients that are admitted to the hospital. Okay, <clears throat> so for example, in that case, A3 is a feature vector, and it tells you about patient 3. Okay, that, that's, that's the idea. All right, back to our story. Our story is that we've got these vectors, and we've got also a set of M scalars. So we're going to call those beta 1 through beta M. And it says, if I just simply multiply A1 by beta 1, you know, A2 by beta 2, and so on, and then add them up, that, that second one was the vector addition right? Then that's called a linear combination of the vectors, okay? That's, that's, that's the idea. And it's a super important uh, concept. Oh, here you would call betas the coefficients in the linear combination. Um, and it's, it's not just a very important concept. It is essentially the central concept in this course. And for that matter, to be honest, a lot of others, right? So it's a very basic idea. Um, and that's what it means. Um, now, um, the, these sometimes linear combinations have special names, right? Like here's a, here's a very common example is when the betas are positive. Let's suppose the betas are positive and they sum to one, right? Um, then uh, this 
linear combination here is sometimes called a, a weighted average or something like that. Um, or another word for it is a convex combination. <clears throat> That's because it connects to some mathematic, uh, some other mathematics, but it's just called a weighted average or something like that. So yeah, it'd be an example that like this, um, if, you know, anyway, so that would be, that, that that's kind of, yeah, that, that'd be the weighted, weight, weighted average. Okay. Um, all right. So here's a very important identity. It, it's, you have to look at it to make sure, it looks silly and what it says is kind of goofy, but this is, it it's, makes sense. It says this, it says B is a vector. Uh, and it says that it's, e it's equal to the following. Here's a linear combination of E1 through EN. Remember, these are the unit vectors. So, so it says B is B1 times E1. Let's just check this for a very simple baby vector. Let's take B equals 2 minus 1. That's a 2 vector. And so according to this formula, it says that B is equal to B1, that's 2, times E1, plus um, minus 1 times E2. Okay, so okay, let's 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 check. Um, that's two times e one, right? And then I'll just write it as minus zero one like that. Okay, and then because I've run out of time, plan I've run out of space and have planned poorly my equation space. I'll just do two operations in one. I'm going to multiply this together. I get two zero, and I'm going to subtract that, and I get two, and I get minus one. And sure enough, that is the same as B. Okay, so uh, so what this says is something. I mean, it's kind of people can also make this sound weird, weird and mystical or something. They would say that you know a vector is represented as the sum of its coefficients times the unit vectors, so, something like that. But anyway, it's it's a this says less than you uh, than you think. But I mean, it, it's something we're going to come back to a bunch of times. Okay, that's a linear combination. Um, again, so far. It means nothing to you uh, or so far until we look at applications and then it starts getting quite interesting. Um, so here's one. Well, first we look just graphically, right? Um, so if I have two vectors, you know, A1 and A2, um, then I can form a linear combination. Let's see how to form that visually. Uh, the linear combination 0.75, three quarters of A1 plus 1.5 A2. Well, I start with A1 here. I multiply it by three quarters. Now, what that does is it simply shrinks its length by uh, 25%. It multiplies it by 0.75. Okay, so that's this point here. It had been point. It had been going out. Well, this vector is in fact four zero, and over here, this vector is three zero, which is indeed 0.75 times this vector here. Um, okay, um, here's a two, which is two 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 comma two. That's another vector. Um, and here, uh, what I can do is I'm going to multiply that by 1.5. Uh, and that would give me this vector here, which would be the 3, 3 vector, right? Because if you multiply 2, 2 by 1.5, you get 3, 3. Okay. And when I add them together, I'm going to get this thing here. Okay. So uh, this is a kind of a visual example of what a linear combination uh, means. And it's an important, it's an important figure that you should have in your mind. Okay. Um, let's jump to finance, okay? So in finance, let's suppose we have, uh, this is going to be a super simple thing. We have three time periods, uh, sorry, four time, uh, three time periods. I'm sorry, these are three vectors and these are cash flows, okay? So let's analyze a cash flow. So let's look at the first one and the periods could be a year, let's say. And what it does is it says that, um, this says, this one says one, and let's assume that one here uh, one means a payment to you. So this cash flow says, here's what it is. Right now, you get a dollar, okay? Um, it says one year from now, uh, you get minus $1.1. That means you pay $1.1. And in the third year, zero. Um, and so we can understand, when you see this vector, you should be able to understand it's a $1 loan from period one to period two with 2 10% uh, uh, interest, right? So what it is is you get a dollar, that's when you initiate the loan. And when you pay it back, you have to pay back the dollar plus 10% interest. And that's minus 1.1. So that's the idea. And it has nothing to do with period three. Um, at the same time, when you see that cash flow, that's a super interesting thing too. It means in period one, you get nothing. But a year from now, you get $1. Uh, 
And two years from now, we, have, we ask you to pay $1.1. So that's a loan. That's a $1 loan from period two to period three with 10% interest, right? So uh, by the way, uh, one of the things you're going to want to do in this class is for all of the applications we look at, you're going to want to be able to translate the concepts and ideas. We don't have many of them yet, right? We have linear combination and stuff like that. Translate those to the application. Uh, by the way, every now and then, it either has no meaning or is silly, but often it's super interesting, right? Like, so for example, uh, we could write out we could write out what the cash flow of a mortgage is of a fully amortized mortgage, right? You could uh, work out the cash flow for a bond, right? In which case, you'd get coupon payments, and then at the very end, you'd get the whole you'd get not only the coupon final coupon payment, but you'd also get the principal back, right? So uh, this comes up a lot. All right. Back to our main story here. Our main story is now to look at a linear combination. So we're going to look at a very specific one just for fun. Um, so we're going to look at C1. That's this, this literally this vector right here, plus 1.1 times C2. That's this vector here. <coughs> now when you do that, it's really awesome. Here's let, Let's work out what you get. So C1 is 1 minus 1.10. Um, there we go. And then we go plus... 1.1 times 0, 1, minus 1.1. And let's see what we get. Well, in the first one, we get 1.1 times 0 is 0, so I get 1. Uh, here I get minus 1.1, 1 .1, uh, this one, plus 1 1.1 times 1. Well, that's 0. And then down here, I get minus 1.1 uh, 1 .1 squared, right? Which is like minus 1.21, I think. Okay. So that's cool. If I just asked you to describe in words the cat, what is that cash flow vector? You would say, I don't know. It means this. It means I get a dollar in the first period, and then the second period, nothing happens. And in the third period, though, I have to pay back the dollar and ten percent interest accrued twice. That's why you get it squared, and that's minus one point two one. So, um, okay. So this is cool, and this is a super basic concept in finance and a lot of other stuff. You would say, I mean, this is a super simple example, but you would say here that you have, we have replicated, right, a two-period loan, right? That's a two-period loan, cash flow. I've replicated a two-period loan from two one-period loans, and I've done it as a linear combination. You know, C, uh, C1 plus 1.1 C2. So that's, that's kind of the idea. And these are concepts, we'll, we'll come back to them later.